In this video, we're going to look at a couple of basic example problems with calculating work and also applying the total work done to the change in kinetic energy of the object. So this first problem is really just to talk about a couple of ideas with work, some very, very basic questions. So we're looking at the work done in the following situations. And so in situation A, we have a person applying a 20 newton force downward at an angle of 50 degrees relative to the horizontal, pushing a broom a distance of 5.5 meters horizontally along the floor. So we have that the force is 20 newtons. It's at an angle of 50 degrees below the horizontal. And we're sliding the broom a distance of 5.5 meters. And so we need to know the definition of work. Work is the force times the distance times the cosine of the angle between them. But again, it's more common to look at this in terms of the components of the forces. So we can have the parallel component of the force. So the component of the force that's parallel to the motion of the object times how far it moves. Or again, we could take the displacement and we could find the component of the displacement parallel to the force. For this one, the easiest thing to do is we're going to break the force into components. Since the displacement's in the x direction, that just means that we need the x component of this force. The x component of the force will be 20 times the cosine of 50 degrees, which is 12.856 newtons. And so the work done pushing the broom is 12.856 newtons times 5.5 meters, which gives a work of 70.707 joules. Part B, Ben applies an upward force to lift a 129 kilogram barbell to a height of 1.98 meters at a constant speed. And so in this case, if he's moving at a constant speed, then the upward force that he's applying is going to equal the weight of the barbell. And so we have the barbell, if we calculate its weight, It would be the mass of 129 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. The force that Ben exerts equals the force of gravity because it's moving at a constant speed. And so the work that Ben does is going to be the opposite of the work done by gravity. So the work done by gravity is the mass times 9.8 times the vertical distance that it moves. The work done by gravity is negative, so this is the opposite of the work done by gravity. Again, if it moves at a constant speed, that means the kinetic energy is not changing. And so the work that Ben does has to be exactly the opposite of the work that gravity does. This would be true even if it wasn't moving at a constant speed if they told you that it started and ended at rest. So at the beginning, he might apply a force that's a little bit bigger than the force of gravity. At the end, he might apply a force that's a little bit less. But his average force would equal the force of gravity. And he would do just as much work as gravity does so that the kinetic energy does not change. And so this work done by gravity is negative mg times the vertical distance d. That's often how I'll write the work done by gravity. So it's that force of gravity, 129 times 9.8, times the vertical distance. So again, this is one where we're looking at the component of the motion parallel to the force. It's the vertical distance times the force of gravity. So this gives the work that Ben 
does. A negative times a negative is positive. So it's positive 129 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 1.98 meters. And we get that the work that he does is 2,503.116 joules. So again, you're often looking at the work done lifting and lowering an object. And if they tell you that it moves at a constant speed, or they tell you that it starts and ends at rest, the work done by the applied force lifting it and the work done by gravity are going to be exactly opposite each other. This next problem is another one where we're going to look at the work done by gravity. We have a block of ice with a mass of 3 kilograms. It's sliding down a ramp that's inclined at a 30 degree angle. We're given that it slides 1.2 meters down the ramp, and then you're told specifically the 1.2 meters is the distance along the ramp. So you have this block of ice, it's 3 kilograms. It's going to be moving down the ramp 1.2 meters. This angle is 30 degrees. Now, we could also calculate this height. I'm going to do this because I'm going to show a couple of different ways of finding the work done by the force of gravity. And so for this, the height, I would take the sine of 30 degrees, and it would equal the height divided by 1.2. And so I get that the height is 0.6 meters. OK, so to do this, I first need to calculate the force of gravity. The force of gravity is 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 29.4 newtons. Now, one of the methods to do this is to break that force of gravity into components. And I can find this parallel component of the force of gravity. It would be 29.4 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 14.7 newtons. So the work done by gravity could be looked at as the parallel component of the force of gravity, the component that's parallel to the motion down the ramp, so that component that's parallel to the incline, times the distance along the incline. So that would be 14.7 newtons times 1.2 meters. And so I would get a work of 17.64 joules. But I could also look at this as looking at the force times the component of the motion, the component of the displacement, parallel to the force. So since we're looking at the force of gravity, the force of gravity is straight down. And so my parallel distance is this height. That's the reason that I calculated it. So if I did that, I would have 29.4 newtons times 0.6 meters. And it gives the exact same thing, 17.64 joules. And this is true even if the ramp is curved. Um, if the ramp is curved, all we need to look at is the vertical distance traveled. We wouldn't be able to look at the parallel component of the force, because that would keep changing as it moves. But we could look at the force times the vertical distance traveled. And so that's a very easy way. That gives the mg times the vertical distance that I talked about in the last question. And so this has one extra piece to it. So we found the work done. We want to know the final speed. So this is where we use the work energy theorem. So the net work done equals the change in kinetic energy of the object. 
which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So in this problem, the force of gravity is one force. I do also have the normal force. The work done by the normal force in this problem is going to be zero. The normal force is perpendicular to the direction it's moving the entire time. And so any force that's perpendicular to the motion does zero work. And so the net work done is the work done by gravity that I calculated, 17.64 joules. And that's going to equal 1 half times 3 kilograms times the unknown final speed squared minus 1 half times 3 kilograms times the initial speed, but it says that it starts from rest, so that's 0 squared. And so if I solve that, I get that the velocity is the square root of 11.76, which is 3.429 meters per second. So again, if I know the work done, if I know the total work done by all of the forces, I can use that with the initial speed to figure out the final speed. Sometimes it starts from rest, but you have to be careful. It doesn't always start from rest. So you need to make sure that you do the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy if there is some. In the final problem I'd like to look at in this video, it's going to be one that's similar to a couple of things that we've done in some of the other problems. So we have two industrial spies sliding a uh, safe across the floor. One of them is pushing down at an angle. One of them is pulling up at an angle. The magnitudes and directions of their forces are not changing. So spy one, it says that it's pushing with a force of 12 newtons at a 30 degree angle below the horizontal. So that's this one. Spy 2 is pulling at a force of 10 newtons at a 40 degree angle above the horizontal. So looking at those, force 2 is 10 newtons at a 40 degree angle. So I can break that into components. If I'm looking at the work done by the forces, since it's sliding horizontally, all I really care about is the horizontal component of the force. So the horizontal component of force 2 is 7.66 newtons. If I look at the force applied by spy 1, that was 12 newtons, and it was at a 30 degree angle. Again, all I'm really interested in is the x component of that force. And so that x component is 10.392 newtons. If I wanted to actually calculate what the normal force was, I would need to get those y components. So the first thing that we're asked for is how much work is done by force 1 and force 2 during the displacement d. And again, this displacement is 8.5 meters. So the work done by force 1, again force 1 was the 12 newtons, it would be the parallel component of force 1, which is 10.392 newtons, times how far it slides, which is 8.5 meters. So we calculate that work, and we get 88.3346 joules. The work done by spy 2 would be the force of spy 2. That's the 10 newton force, but what we're interested in is the parallel component of that force, 7.66 newtons. And work is the parallel component of the force, the component parallel to the motion, times how far it slides. So that's 7.66 newtons times 8.5 meters, which gives a work of 65.11 joules. Part B, during the displacement, what is the work done by the gravitational force? And what is the work done by the normal force? Well, if we go back and we look at those, the normal force is in the vertical direction. It's straight up and down. And this is moving perfectly horizontally. 
the normal force is perpendicular to the motion. That means that there's no component of the normal force parallel to the motion. All of it is perpendicular. So the normal force in this problem will do zero work. The same thing with the force of gravity. In this problem, the force of gravity is perpendicular to the motion it's moving, to the direction it's moving. So the work done by the force of gravity is going to be zero as well. Again, the work done by gravity is not always zero. If it's moving up and down, then gravity does work. And the work done by the normal force is not always zero. If something is sliding along a surface, that normal force will not do any work. But if you had a person standing in an elevator, if the elevator accelerates up or down, the normal force of the floor pushing them up, that would do work. So in these cases, the work done by gravity is going to be zero. The work done by the normal force is going to be zero. Again, both are perpendicular to the direction of motion. And that idea of forces being perpendicular to the motion, doing zero work, that explains why in uniform circular motion, the centripetal force, that net force towards the center of the circle, which is along the radius of the circle, why that doesn't change the speed of an object. The speed stays constant as it's moving in the circle. That force is perpendicular to the tangent to the circle. The radius is perpendicular to a tangent line on the circle. And so that force does zero work as well. Okay, finally for part C, we're trying to find the speed at the end of the displacement. So we need the net work done. So the net work is going to be the work done by spy one plus the work done by spy two plus the work done by gravity plus the work done by the normal force. You need to include the work done by each of the forces. Now some of those are zero, so we don't need to worry about them, but we do need to include all of those works. So the work done by spy one was 88.33 joules. The work done by spy two was 65.11 joules. And then the work done by gravity and the normal force were both zero. So the work done is 153.44 joules. So now we can use the work energy theorem that the net work equals the change in kinetic energy. So again, change is always final minus initial. So I have positive 153.44 joules. And that equals 1 half times the mass of 225 kilograms times the final speed squared minus 1 half times the mass times the initial speed squared. We're told that it's initially stationary, so that initial kinetic energy is zero. So if I solve for the speed of the crate, I get 1.1679 meters per second. Again, a few of these problems are problems that you could have solved for the speeds using kinematics. Because the forces are constant, you could calculate the acceleration of the object, and then using that acceleration, you could find the speed of the object. But this work energy idea is an alternate method. And this work energy idea is going to be important because there are a lot of things where you can only use this method. If you have something that's sliding down a curved ramp, the work done by gravity is very easy to calculate, mg times the vertical distance, but it's not something that you could use kinematics for because the acceleration is changing as your angle is changing. Also, if you have something with a spring, the work done by a spring you can calculate, but to find the force of the spring, the force is not constant, so the acceleration is not constant, and so it would be a very difficult problem to do trying to use the ideas of acceleration, but it's something that's very easy, in fact, almost the same difficulty as a problem like this, if you're trying to use the idea of work and energy. Again, in some other videos, we'll be looking at more of those problems, some other things that are a little bit more difficult, also some problems that will be involving work done by non-constant forces.